Into the Abyss, chemosynthetic oases. A food chain centered on sunlight supports the bulk of life on Earth. However, as you go below 200 meters, light naturally stops existing in the deep water. Therefore, the deep ocean is devoid of any flora. Therefore, there is a food chain that runs entirely autonomously. But into the abyss, which process does the food chain follow to sustain life? Is it something mind-blowing? Let's find out, as in this video, we will talk about chemosynthetic oases that you'd find deep into the abyss. Hello and welcome back everyone. Before we start, subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this and don't forget to press the bell icon. Having said that, let's dive in. Chemical engineers employ these chemical-rich fluids, such as methane and hydrogen sulfide, that seep out of the bottom via cracks that have been created by tectonic action as their major source of energy rather than sunlight. It's astounding that bacteria serve as the primary producers instead of living plants and use this chemical energy in a process called chemosynthesis rather than photosynthesis. Ecosystems rely on certain creatures' capacity to transform inorganic substances into food that other organisms may use or consume. Since plants need sunlight to produce food through photosynthesis, the vast majority of life on Earth is built on a food chain that revolves around the sun. In contrast, in settings without sunlight and hence without plants, organisms depend on primary production through a procedure known as chemosynthesis, which is powered by chemical energy. Together, photosynthesis and chemosynthesis fuel all life on Earth. Wherever there is enough sunshine, whether on land, in shallow water or even inside and below transparent ice, photosynthesis occurs in plants and some microbes. Carbon dioxide in water converted into sugar, food, and oxygen by all photosynthetic organisms using sun's energy. Chemosynthesis is a process used by bacteria and other organisms to manufacture food using the energy produced during inorganic chemical reactions. To create sugar, all chemosynthetic organisms utilize the energy provided through chemical reactions, although different species employ various routes. For instance, at hydrothermal vents, bacteria oxidize hydrogen sulfide, combine it with carbon dioxide and oxygen, and then generate water, sugar, and sulfur. By oxidizing methane or reducing sulfide, other bacteria produce organic materials. Ocean research, which began in 1977 with the discovery of a flourishing community in the absence of sunlight at a vent on the deep ocean floor, is responsible for the majority of our current understanding of chemosynthetic ecosystems. Since then, chemosynthetic bacterial populations have been discovered surrounding hydrothermal vents, cold seeps, whale carcasses, sunken ships, and even hot springs on land and in the ocean. These communities were around all along. It was only that no one had ever thought to seek them. Therefore, hydrocarbon-rich fluid and gas may create a variety of uncommon and distinct ecosystems in geologically active regions like the Gulf of Mexico, ranging from a small patch of black and degraded silt to cold seeps with substantial muscle beds. In certain circumstances, a chilly sea is overrun with creatures. There are thousands upon thousands of them. This is because the animals have access to an abundant energy supply. Thus, the bacteria that utilize the hydrocarbons that leak from the bottom are continually being replenished after being consumed. We've also found deep sea locations, which are where incredibly salty and thick brine oozes out of the seafloor and forms a lake at the ocean's bottom. In addition, we have observed asphalt seeps, when liquid asphalt was observed pouring as droplets from the bottom. Sochu worms, which are unique to chemosynthetic ecosystems, often predominate in the Gulf of Mexico, because they are the foundation species. They are those that develop habitats for other species. The list of smallest species includes alvin, ACARA shrimp, chitin, lobsters, limpid, snails, and so forth. Because of the accessibility of food supplies, several animals may survive here. They can locate a place to hide as well as a solid surface to adhere to. In addition, you can occasionally see larger predators drifting in for a brief meal before moving on, such as giant crabs, octopuses, fish, and so on. Further away from these seepage locations, there may be hard substrates in the form of carbonates or asphalt concretions. In these places, corals and other suspension-feeling creatures may be seen using the heated substrate as an anchor as well as a way to ascend into the water column. So, for a variety of reasons, we are looking for chemosynthetic ecosystems. First of all, they are quite cool, so why wouldn't you want them? Second, many people are unaware of the numerous ecological services they offer us. They probably play a part in the ocean's nutrient cycle. 
They improve fisheries, and gathering this sort of important baseline data on these delicate ecosystems would enable better management of the deep sea floor. Finally, they give us a sensation of amazement, which is something that shouldn't be undervalued because it inspires others. That's it for the day, guys. We hope you liked the video. Please click the like button if you did. And if you're new here, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Thanks. For